Someone's asking why three cat six is done. Why don't you answer? All right. That? Well, so what we do is we found we we run, we run what's called the distributed video run. All right. So the distributed video run has an RG six coaxial, which is basically for resale value. Now sometimes we use them, like for instance, if somebody wanted to add an in room sub, we could take that that coaxial, hook it to a sub out of a of a of a matrix or a receiver. Then on the other end, put a wireless sub transmitter and do that. But it's for resale value, right? Then we run two category six cables and we run one category six shielded cable, right? So, so what that does is it allows our clients, if they wanted to do just a local system, we could take one of the cat sixes and make it a network and plug it into the Roku. We could take another one and make it a network and plug it into the TV. Um, we could take another one and send video, send an audio bail them back to a rack and they could transmit audio on it. Um, if they wanted to do distributed video with a, um, say for instance, they wanted to do an H a HD base T AV pro edge system. We take, we have the shielded cat six and the shielded cat six is to prevent any kind of interference. Or I am interference or distortion throughout the wiring of the house and transmission to send that signal for, for HDMI video. If they say we're in a situation that we have a, a, a spot where we're not getting good Wi-Fi, we could take one of those Cat Sixes and now plug in and, and put an um, access point behind a TV. So we found that three Cat Sixes and one coaxial to kind of be the magic. We've done more yeah. and we've done less, but we found it. Say you wanted to do an IR on a TV, you could take a couple conductors of the Cat Six and do an IR repeater. I mean, it, it, the Cat Six is. Remember the old ro Road Runner was Mimi, and they had Acme, and they made that company made everything. Well, Cat mm -hmm. Six is kind of the Acme of what we're, you know Acme of what we're doing. Um, yeah, there's Cat Six A, there's Fiber, there's Cat Seven, there's all kinds of stuff you can do. But the reality is, is that the standard is Cat Five, Cat Cat Six, and manufacturers all build their products based on that infrastructure. Because if you made it, if you made something based on just fiber you're going to go out of business because there's very few places that have fiber. So somebody asked, why didn't you do fiber instead of running um, repeaters and, you know, and That's a good uh, question. We don't need to, we don't need to, we don't need to, right? Fiber is expensive and fiber. We do use fiber often. We use fiber on long range deployments when we're going from building to building on commercial installations. Yeah. In an ideal world, fiber would be great, but the HDMI extenders that use fiber are twice as much. Um, the connections, the terminations on fiber are expensive. And to be honest with you, very few things in our industry are built around fiber optic. That's just mm. the bottom line. You know, you can't go buy an HDMI matrix and plug a fiber right into it. That's the, it, you can plug a CAT6 into it or a CAT6A. That's just the, the reality. So we use fiber when it's applicable. Now, eventually, yeah, fiber is going to be important. And, and, a lot of times we'll run what's called Smurf tube, which is flex pipe, where we can run a fiber later, or we'll run a fiber out to a gate, or we're anything that's a long range. Right. Where we have to keep the integrity. Now, what you have to understand about fiber is that fiber is very fragile. So whenever we run a fiber, we run two, and we run two. Eighty percent of the time, one of those fibers gets jacked up. That's wow. the reality. You've got construction. You've got, I mean, when we're doing like apartment buildings and we got to go, you know, quarter mile, we'll run two. It, it happens. So fiber, yeah, yes, in a perfect world, fiber is the future. Fiber is the way to go. But the reality is most things aren't built around it. That's why we don't run it. And it's very expensive. It's very, um, um, even the connections and connectors. When we do run fiber, it's usually to connect networks or network switches together. That's just, yeah, that's just the reality. Yes, fiber is the future. Electric cars are the future. You know, fiber is the Tesla right now. I mean, yeah. listen, it is what it is. When we're talking about wiring a home and we're talking about running Smurf tube or conduit or whatever, or fiber optic, listen, it's all great theoretically, right? Mm -hmm. So I deal every single day with people that are building high-end homes or high-end commercial applications. It's about what people are willing to pay for because we have to, they have to buy it. We have to get it. We have to send relatively high paid people out to install it because listen, when you're building a structure, the most important factor, and I want to reiterate this above all is the quality of the pre-wire. If a, a home or structure is properly pre-wired with the right infrastructure, 
then any problem can be easily solved. If it's yeah. not properly wired or then you have real problems. Now you have to trace out things and you have to find it. So conduit's expensive. Smurf tube, which is, is orange flexible conduit is expensive. Cutting the holes, running it, setting it up, running fiber is extremely expensive. It's about, it's about what people are willing to pay for. So we run what we feel is going to give our clients the most options now and in the near future based on experience. If fiber eventually becomes the way to go, which it hasn't, we listen, fiber has been around for a long time. We were running fiber in 2003. We we're running a, a two by two by two, two coaxials, two cat fives and two fibers. That fiber is useless. Nobody uses it. That's what I'm saying is we have to, we have to build an infrastructure in a home that's a affordable and B has upgrade ability and cat six. A lot of companies are still running cat five and you know what? They still haven't taken full advantage of the bandwidth of Cat Five. We switched to Cat Six years ago because we care. We're a we're a high end company. You know, oh, why aren't you running Cat Six A? Well, you're going to pay for it because it's twice as much. Wow. Uh, why aren't you running Cat Seven? Well, because nobody uses it, nobody calls for it, and it's three times as much. So you got somebody that's willing to pay for it? We'll run it. We'll run the shit out of it. But until they're willing to pay for it, uh. -uh. So Uncle Donnie's keeping it real. You guys can all do your debates and your forums and all that, you know, this and that. I'm telling you from the ground, reporting from the troops on the field, this is what we're doing. And this is what people are willing to pay for. And we never have a problem. We never have a problem with distributed video. We never have a problem with, with sending high-speed internet. You know, we're still not using, we're not even getting close to using the capability and bandwidth of Cat 6, yet alone Cat 6A or yet alone Cat 7. I have people all the time that read it in there. I read on the internet, I need Cat 6A. Okay, that's absolutely fine, sir. So instead of your distributed video run costing $180 trimmed out, it's now going to cost $287 trimmed out. Would you like it? Oh, well, uh, well, uh, you know, you know, it's all about what you're willing to pay for. Listen, right. you can debate it all you want. We do it every day. You see it in your house, Gene. Do you feel like you're underwired for anything? <laughs> no, and in fact, I, I kind of I mean I use right. I had Blue Jeans cable send me all Cat Six, and it's bonded pairs, which is hard, very hard to terminate. Yeah, it's a pain in the ass. Thanks, Blue Jeans. <laughs> but, but you know what? It's, there, there's a reason for bonded pairs. They use the same right. cable that they use in their HDMI cables. Yeah, bonded right. pairs keeps those conductors evenly spaced all the time, so the impedance is always right. constant. Right. So yeah. I'm not saying you need. I'm not saying you necessarily need to do that, but it is incredible that we even have that. Um, no, it's great. In the it's house. great. It's just listen, it's about what you're willing to pay for. You know, you have to pay. Listen, you don't want for, two things. Number one, you don't want an electrician running your low voltage cable because no. if you if you put too much pressure on a category cable, you'll you'll twist those cables are cut in such a way that they lose their rating. I've I've actually seen electricians in, in their defense, they're used to pulling Romex, which is just copper wire. You know, mm -hmm. I see the electricians put cat fives over their shoulder and pull them. I'm like, whoa, what are you doing, dude? He's like, that's ah, just wire. Wire is just wire. No, wire is not just wire, right? You don't have an electrician wire. I mean, unless he's a trained and low voltage expert, don't have him do it. My guys, we always come in. If you're building a structure or a home, we come in right as the electricians are finishing because we, 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 we go in separate pathways. We, we never run parallel with the electrician's high voltage wires. I've, I've seen it before. I've yep. seen electronic, your electric engineer, Gene, you can't run a parallel perpendicular to a point, but nothing mm -hmm. real high voltage. We come in after the electricians, we cut our own holes and we take a lot of care. We take, and we, we, we take our wires and lift them up above a big trunk line of electrical wires and we zip tie them and we put them up. Our, our pre wires are works of art. And, and, and two things that you're going to, when you get an integrator and installation company, because there's, let me tell you, boys and girls, about 75% of the people doing it shouldn't be doing it because they don't care. They don't know. They're just doing it to make money. Um, is the quality of the rack, how the, the rack is trimmed out, how it's labeled, or how the pre-wire, how the wires are run. I've had builders tell us, this is the I've been building for 25 years. It's the most beautiful wiring job I've ever seen. Yeah. We take a lot of pride in that. The reason we do that is because we know if we do our job properly, then whatever that client, even if they fire us or we go out of business and he gets somebody else in there, 
that that client is going to have an incredibly um, easy to use and, and proper infrastructure. And that's really, really important. And, and, and we take that to heart. We care about what we do. And so this is a great point, right? right? This is a great point right here. The builder really screws you when you, <laughs> when they want to do their pre-wire install, they do the crappiest 18 gauge speaker cable and they pre-wire for Sonos. Product, well, production builder, production, like you're, look, the bottom line is this production builders don't give a shit. They'll run the cheapest, whoever's the cheapest to run it. That's all they care about. They care yeah. about boom, 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 boom. Reproducing the same floor, four, four plans. And, and they don't care and it's irrelevant. Like, dude, I'm, I'm not going to knock your builder, but your electrician wired your house in two days, right? Yeah. The house that we do takes the electricians two to three weeks or more, right? Yeah. It, 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 it is what it is. We do custom home builders. Our custom home builders let us come in. They don't ask us to add money into it for them. They just want a quality job or, or if they're cost plus, you know, the clients know ahead of time they're going to pay a certain amount of money and they let us figure our own wiring out with a client which is super important production homes mm -mm. all they care about is and they put a minimal amount of wire if you don't have a builder if you build a house and you don't have a structured panel and you don't have at least one or two cat sixes to every tv drop and cat sixes in the ceiling for access points you're just getting screwed i mean if you've got a two-story house you're really screwed because there's not a whole lot you can do i'm just saying the wiring of your home if you're going to build a home or you're going to build a structure is super uber critical to your longevity and happiness over the years with the systems that you put into it, because doing it after the fact is almost economically unfeasible. And listen, I don't want to be a jerk about it, but it's important to me because I care about my clients and I care about you guys because nothing sucks worse than spending $400,000 on a house. Then going to, oh man, let's do these access points. Or that's why there's a whole industry of junk on Amazon, like these. Oh, you know, I've got these 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 access points, and they're you know they're great. They're mesh. They're not great. You think they're great? They're not great until you it, listen. Get some real wiring in your house, even if you got to sneak out and do it. It's important. Run some conduit into it. Run some wires to the outside of the house. It's super critical. That's the chance you get that's going to affect you for a long time down the road. And I'll just Amen. Don, yeah, sorry. Reverend well, Reverend Don. Reverend yeah, Don tonight. Listen, dude, I that's what I do. You know, and I I I freaking love my clients. I every project, dude. What did you see tonight when that that nine million dollar house? I'm I'm texting you pictures like I just had a uh, baby. Like yeah, look at that it. was awesome. You know, that's yeah, I, I yep. wish we could put them up. It I just want everybody if they're gonna do this to focus on the right things instead of focusing on you know, should I do JTR clips? Dude, that's irrelevant. Focus on the wiring infrastructure. Do you got good power? Do you do you have proper air conditioning in that room? Do you have ventilation in that room that when the air conditioner kicks on, it's not going to go, Shh, you know, <laughs> I, I mean, right? You didn't even think about any of this, right, Gene? Well, so I we, knew the air conditioning because I dealt with it in my other house. <laughs> right, but and, you, yeah. there's a lot of factors. No, but the heat dissipation thing is is one thing because now Dude. I'm doing all this powerful Dude. network gear. That HDMI matrix generates a lot of heat. Cable boxes. Create. Cable boxes generate a heat. The Marantz receivers generate heat. You know, Dan, Sound United re receivers run hot because they're right. putting, you know, 13 channels in a seven channel size chassis with all the hot HDMI in it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So you just get, you got to, and I'm, I'm going to be working with that company, AC Infinity, to, to try to help cool the, uh, the AC Infinity is a good company. They make a really great product for not a lot of money. Um, they make a multitude. They really filled a, a niche in the industry of, of cooling. That's another thing, how you, how you, where your electronics so, live. So <clears throat> anyways, guys, I just wanted to give you a overview of what's going on with the Audio Hulk Smart House. HD 2020 has been instrumental in getting this thing off the ground for me. I really appreciate it. They, they you guys, you, you the people that work at your company are absolute professional. No, man. listen, it's, it's really almost 30 years in the business. I've never had a staff or a group of people that I work with. It's not just a skill level, it's the enthusiasm and the the pride and 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 the like wow, we're doing some killer stuff here. They're super excited, especially the guys working on your and gals with uh, you know Miranda working yeah. on your project because it's something special. HD2020 you know, is an integration company. We are all about giving our clients the best bang for the buck in their home, the most stylish, the most integrated electronics. 
So, so this is really kind of a cohesive thing that we're doing. So just cause you see Gene's theater with, you know, $60,000 front speakers doesn't mean if you get less than that, you're going to have a, a, a crappy theater. It just means that this is the reference, but Hey, we're testing this and this is really damn close for this amount of money. You should buy it. Solid, pretty solid. Ah! All right, ready? Yeah. For real, just 